From clean wine to hard kombucha and hard seltzers surging in popularity, we want to distill the truth from the hype. Are these trendy alcoholic drinks truly healthy options? And is there such a thing as booze with benefits? Serving up the 411 is registered dietitian and founder of the Better Nutrition Program, Ashley Koff. Hey, Ashley, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Dr. Ian. Um, so listen, you hear the term booze with benefits. What comes to mind when you hear that? The one thing that we have to be clear about is there are uh, booze is not a health food. So we're not talking about kale versus broccoli here <laughs> or canned vegetables versus you know frozen vegetables. Um, it's not a health food for us. There are research studies that come out and talk about the benefits of compounds that are in alcohol, but what they're not talking about are is the actual alcohol, and that's yes. where we distinguish. There is no such thing as booze with benefits. Yeah. Well, we talk about, for example, flavonoids, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in red wine, which are definitely good and very healthy for you, but the flavonoids come with the other stuff, and you yes. can't ignore the other stuff, right? Yeah, I've literally never said to a client, hey, like if you don't drink, I want you to start drinking um, because of the flavonoids there. Or, um, hey, if you're drinking one glass, I want you to have two or three to be able to get those flavonoids. So yeah. we do, we get those from, you know, there are nutrients that are in everything we're going to talk about today. There could be adaptogen herbs or there could be, you know, ingredients in the grape or in the grain or anything else like that. Um, but when we extrapolate those over to the alcohol and forget what alcohol Alcohol is to the body, which is actually a poison, we're making generalizations that are inappropriate. Less processed ingredients, no doubt about, is healthier for you. However, you have celebrities like Cameron Diaz and Gwyneth Paltrow pushing the virtues of what they call clean wine. What is clean wine? How is it clean? I actually have a dark secret. Before I became a dietitian, I sold sugared cereals to Americans and told them how good they were for them, especially <laughs> I worked in advertising. I was an advertising executive and I found out that all that sugar, I could actually legally say they provide you more energy. And what do people <laughs> really want? They want more energy, right? <laughs> so we have to remember that um, really clean is a marketing term. There is no definition. So the driver, this desire to believe in clean is really valid, but the word clean is not a certified word. It's not yeah. something you can trust or go with on that part alone. Yeah. yeah. Speaking in this vein, uh, kombucha, which is like, you know, the last five years, everything is kombucha. You go to the grocery store, they got whole rows of this stuff. I don't even, I can't tell the difference with these things, but um, there's now boozy kombucha. So the idea is that, well, you take kombucha, which they say is healthy. That's kind of a whole nother conversation, but this is a healthy way to have alcohol. Combine it with kombucha. I mean, what do you think about that? Kombucha is fermented um, tea, so you already have a little bit of alcohol in there already. So when we harden the kombucha, we are making it, um, we're just intensifying the amount of alcohol to approach, you know, what you would get in a beer or a glass of wine, et cetera. When you're doing that, there's probably a pretty good likelihood that we're decreasing the ability for those um, good bacteria to survive or thrive. You may get antioxidants and there could be adaptogen herbs in there and maybe your kombuchas from really clean sources, you know, or that kind of thing. Right. But again, not a health food, uh, not a healthier way. Perhaps it has fewer net carbs than something else. Um, that's If that's your consideration set, go for that. But don't consider it a health food. I want to jump over to hard seltzer. Mm -hmm. Another big business, gaining popularity. It's been reported that half of the people in the U.S. drinking alcohol are having one hard seltzer a week. Like, is this a better alcohol option, the hard seltzer, or no? One of the concerning things that I have, a, that, that one of the things that concerns me about spiked seltzer is a lot of them are being made from corn. Now that's because they can say they're gluten-free, right? So right. we're like, oh, immediately it's healthy for us. But remember, soda, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup. Well, if we're fermenting that into alcohol, what's to say that this isn't as problematic for our liver and, you know, like for diabetes and all these other things as those sodas are long term? That's right. Well, listen, that's great advice, Ashley. And, you know, alcohol is not perfect, but I always say do things in moderation. And usually at the end of the day, you'll come out OK. So, Ashley, thanks for all your advice. Thank you. All right.